Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today is one of those videos where I have to catch up on some of the things that I've touched on or talked about in other videos but I wasn't clear enough and so today I'm going to go back and look at some of those things that a lot of you have sent me questions or comments about. A lot of you asked about the software for the engraver and I'm just going to very quickly go through some of the things on here. First of all this is the website and I'm going to scroll down past all of the pictures and all of the videos and right near the bottom there's a link right there that's where you can download the software and anybody can download it you can test it out and try it yourself. So I'm going to close that. Here's the first piece of software. There's three pieces of software that come with this. This is called BenBox and this is the the software that I use to import pictures from uh, and there's one that you already saw. This software will also do a little bit of text and a little bit of drawing and there's the controls right over there for it and I've already set it up to be in English so that's one of the software that comes with the download and of course these downloads are all free. Another one that comes with it is something called Inkscape and it's more of a drawing program but I understand it will control the engraver. I have not used this software at all so I'm going to close that one. And the last software that comes is something called GRBL Controller. This software uses AutoCAD files and I did use this a little bit. This is what I used to make the, the star with. Uh, but I'm, I, I've used it very minimally so um, other people will be able to tell me how to use this before very long. Many of you will recall that a couple of videos ago I made a little keepsake or jewelry box and that the lid wasn't quite right in it and I tried to explain some other ideas and I, that also got a lot of questions so today I've actually made a little mock-up to show you exactly what I wanted to talk about with that lid because it's kind of important I'm finding out uh, quite a number of you are making boxes similar to that so let me show you what I did. I made this little working model and I've done it making clear sides so we can see exactly what's going on. What I wanted to show you is how this box hinges. Now what I did in this box and what I did in the other box was to, with this lid, was to put a, a very thin piece of veneer and you can see the gap in there and you need to do that so that you get a little bit of space in there and to account for any wood movement. Now in the box that I made I put that pin very close to the end and if you watch when this flips up see how it just it just barely holds on its own it doesn't take much effort to knock that down and what I should have done with that box was move that hinge a little bit further ahead and watch the difference that it makes move the back one here as well and watch how that the lid sits now see how it sits nicely now it doesn't it's not going to flop back in fact it may be even a little bit too far uh, I think in the real world I'd want to put it between the two of them that would sit even better but even to show you an exaggeration when we move it even further ahead just so you can see the difference now when we flip it up of course it sits nicely but look at it's taking up half the box you can it's very hard to get your hand in uh, it takes up so much room so it really does make a difference where that pivot point is and of course I've made this lid uh, with three quarter inch so that you can see it a little bit easier on the last video on making the little keepsake box that we did the laminated splines on I got a number of questions and comments from people about splines and I realized we, I haven't talked about splines in a long time quite a number of videos so I wanted to go take a minute to go back and just kind of review what splines are and how we make them. So what you're looking at right now is my splining jig and I actually made this uh, these are maybe a little on the narrow side because I made them for making picture frames uh, but it works out for most of the boxes that I make too if I want to make splines and it's very simple to make all you need to make sure is that this this angle here is 45 degrees you don't even have to measure the other side this angle here is 45 and there's my 
clear uh, square. Uh, so that's 45 degrees. Then the other side wants to be 90 degrees. And if you make sure that that's 90 degrees and this is 45, the other side will automatically be 45. I just made this so that it slips over top of my fence and it fits nice and snugly. There's no slop in there. The only thing that I made with the first one, and I inadvertently ruined the table saw blade by doing that. When I put the screws in, I put the screws, you can see where the you can see where the holes are. I put the holes too close, and when I was cutting the splines, I actually cut into the screws. So um, I tell you that so that you avoid the same problem that I had in putting the screws too close to the bottom of this, and you'll see that I moved them up here, and those are are plenty high now so just something to watch when you make your own spline jig. Now you've already seen how the splining jig works and you'll notice that there's some holes in there where I've cut it. Now when you're using this eventually this part here doesn't matter because it's the leading edge of the blade. So you'll get nice crisp cuts on the leading edge, which is this side. Where you'll get blowout is on the back side. But what you can do with these jigs is just get a, a thin piece of lumber, anything, any scrap lumber, and put that on there. And you still have 45 degree angle. But now you've got a nice clean edge back here so that when you push the wood through you'll get a clean cut on the leading edge but because you've got a backer board here you get a much cleaner edge too than you would than if you had a, a, a slot that was uh, blank back there with no wood to sort of uh, block the, the blowout from the cutting. When you're making splines, you want to have very square edges. Uh, and on these, I've just run some tests for you to see what different blades produce. And, and it's very interesting. I'll show you some close-ups of exactly what these look like. We can, even at this range, you can still get a hint of what's there. There's a very tight view of those uh, different blades that I tried. So there's the 24 tooth and it's almost flat on top. The 50 tooth combination blade is actually better than I thought. It's actually pretty good. It's almost perfect on top. Look at the 90 tooth uh, cross cut blade. It's got quite a V in it. It would be unsuitable. There's the uh, 30 tooth rip blade and that's the the glue line rip and you can see how it's got some sort of ticks on the edge there uh, and the last one is the 60 tooth multi blade and that's the one that I used and it's not perfect but when you put the wood in you can't actually tell that there's looks like there's some very tiny ticks on each side so now I know that some of you are going to be wanting to have a look at the blades, so very quickly in order that I made the cuts, there's the 24 tooth rip, and I wouldn't normally use this as a cross cutting blade. There's the 50 tooth combination blade, the 90 tooth cross cut blade, the 30 tooth ripping blade, the glue line rip, and again I wouldn't really use this one as a cross cutting blade, and there's the multi-purpose uh, 60 tooth, the one that I did use that gives a near perfect uh, square edge on the top. Not long ago, somebody asked me, if I don't have a jointer, what's the best way of getting a nice straight edge on a board? And the answer is by using the tapered jig. Um, jig that I made a video of not very long ago and the way it works is this you get your board you lay it on your um, tapered jig and it can be it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, aligned it can be a little bit askew it doesn't matter um, tighten it down nice and tight on the jig like we've described in that video then you'll need to reset your fence and of course your blade will want to be just slightly above the material and run it through and if you use a good quality blade you will get an excellent quality joint and one of the blades that I recommend is the Freud glue line rip and it's good for thicknesses up to an inch thick and it will give you a beautiful edge on your boards.
Well, that concludes uh, my videos for this session. Uh, I think there's something there for everybody. Um, I'm not going to remind you to subscribe and all that good stuff. What I am going to tell you is I finally joined Instagram. So any of you who are uh, on Instagram, if you want to follow me, um, the link will be in the description box underneath this video. And hopefully I'll be able to use that technology better than I've been using some others. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.